Start at the beginning, way before the ratchetness, before they raped our women, uh, way black, black in the time, a woman can't come from a man, so she birthed mankind, through that holy yoni in between her legs divine, you can see it from this angle with the Eurocentric mind, you've been trained well, so your future is behind. Take a look around, girl, the truth ain't hard to find. See that white standard of beauty got you bleaching your mind. For 400 years they said you was ugly, but you're fine. Shit, more than fine. Got a beauty they can't match even. Brains too strong and wise like Queen Sheba. Most can't deal with your strength, that's why they still beat you. Took you out the Holy Trinity, but still need you. Back to black consciousness is where I'm trying to see you. I'm a star, you're a set. On the throne is where I keep you. Black woman. Most of us think your position is minuscule. Cook, clean, serve, all you was put here to do. Not realizing these qualities were put into you. Cause your leadership skills are natural. Don't believe me, Queen and Zinga led the war against them crackers, fool. My people sleep, so I teach, that's what a master do. Grew up with visions of chauvinistic theatricals. Now it's my mission to grab the culture and get back to you. So we can show the seeds what it is they have to do. Break the chains, run away, slave, they coming after you. Keep the men and women at odds and take the child too. Make sure she have more than one baby daddy, your daddy do. 400 years later, no savior, they really lynched you. So take a listen, black woman, let me heal you. Any man that breaks you down really fears you. My elder Shabaka say what the women do, the men do. So when you start the revolution, we right here with you. What is a lion without his pride? What is a whale without his pie? What is a monkey without his troop? What is a wolf without his pack? The answer is very simple. They are the same thing that a human being is without a try. Pray. I am a genius. My ancestors were geniuses. My ancestors have made me a genius in all that I think, say, and do. I must declare myself a genius. I am a genius. Whenever I am myself, I practice my geniusness and do great things. All my thoughts, choices, and deeds must express my geniusness. I am a genius. My decisions must always be in the best interest of myself, my family, my people, and my God. Only then will I and everyone I know know that I am a genius. I am a genius. At all times, my geniusness must reflect my culture. My geniusness must serve my God. 
My geniusness must make me be one in love and harmony with my family. My geniusness must protect my people. Yep. Yes, at all times I must demonstrate excellence because I am a genius. questions that I get is where are the children and why yourself why you call yourselves the children of the sun But the most important goddesses were black, not just for the African now, in the civilization of the Greek. The Greek was so profoundly affected by the Africans that the goddess of chastity was a black woman, Artemis. The goddess of wisdom was a black woman, Minerva. The goddess of beauty was a black woman, Diana. And many of their great mythological figures which were critical to the vision of history, the history of the Greeks in the Odyssey, the woman who draws, who has the power to draw Odysseus and all his crew into her, is Circe, who is represented as a black woman with African features on the Greek vases. The woman who helps Jason win the Golden Fleece is a black woman, Medea. The woman who marries Perseus, the Greek hero. Oh, it's time to Grab drink. Grab the glass, his family, it's time for us to get started. I'm so excited. Sitting up here, Kid Magic. This is Kid Magic Rock. Shots out. Here we go. Drink it. 
changes I gotta work out gotta start eating a little bit better start gotta start having some of the the nuts and 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 dried fruits and stuff I gotta start getting this chlorophyll in me we're gonna try to increase our magnesium and see what happens and I've been tired of than ever I can't stay up past 7 o'clock. And I can't get up in the morning for the last two days. I've just been sitting in the tub. Crying in the tub. Not crying, but shit. I just relaxed. But actually what happened yesterday, I got hold of a book. You know, I'm going, you know, I'm an audible dude, right? 
And like many of you, like I, I, I never, could never, I got to be able to fill a book. I got to be able to touch the pages. I can't do the electronic book, you know, but I got a big screen now. I got this big old screen right over here. I got this, you know, I can actually read pretty good on those damn things. But a few years ago, I got an Audible book. You know, they was giving books away for free. Now I got a whole Audible library. So I'm going down my Audible list uh, right now. A couple of books I'm listening to. Uh, From Here to Equality uh, by uh, Dr. Der- Dr. Darity uh, and his wife. Both Dr. Darities. I want to make sure I get it right. I don't know. Since her name might be different. We living in in a, in a time. Um, well, anyway, uh, I'm I'm listening to Tools of Titan. I was doing some research on breathing, so I got a book that I'm listening to on that. So I said, "All right, cool. Let me give myself a, you know." So I, it was a book called Black Wealth, and. <clears throat> I picked up this book and I'm like, I just been listening. I've been listening to this motherfucker all night. I fell asleep on it about two or three times. I went to bed uh, where I laid down at about six thirty, seven o'clock, turned it on, you know, slept through some chapters, having dreams, went back, listened to some more. And this book is good as hell. It's called Black Wealth, um, and it's about uh, um, millionaires, individuals who, who right after slavery, was able to build fortunes, right, with some very interesting information. Like, like for example, I did know, I didn't know that Oklahoma, you know what I'm saying, cited with the confederates which meant that the the five so-called civilized nations um uh, sided with the rebels sided with the confederates and held a lot of slaves or held a lot of our people and treated us wrong I mean, now I I heard rumors, but this book, I mean, it's like about black wealth, and I mean, he got into, I mean, he like, yo, you, I, you know, we got done dirty prior to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I mean, and I'm sitting up here like, so I have to, I have to always kind of remind his family we got to be about our business. We got to be about our business. We got to be about, we got to be about us. Because if we can't help ourselves, we can't help nobody else. And history has shown us that nobody else is trying to help us. Not large masses, because I do know, you know, we had some Native American allies, but it just so happens that all of the classes that end up ruling people end up fucking us over. It might not be the whole group, because... And, and that's the that's the that's the delicacy of what we're dealing with because people can always be like you can't say all and I'm not trying to say all but that's where they get us at because you're right it's not all but the ones that be in power be fucking us over so whether we're talking about the Native American family or we're talking about the Indian family or we're talking about the Caribbean family, which is based, can't really, you know, or we're talking about the um, uh, West Asian families, right? We always got allies, but it's the ones in power that be fucking us over. So how do you do that? How do you deal with that? How do you make it clear? Hey, I love everybody. But I have to be aware of the fact that certain individuals in power and groups in power have always turned their black back on us, especially here. Especially here. Why not? They held a lot of black uh, slavery too. <laughs> you ever check 
out the title, A Pot to Piss In. Is that an actual book? Is that an actual book, Kwame? Why not? The hell of the day, man. And I'm sitting up here like, I'm reading this, and I'm sitting up here thinking about all the black black folks talking about got Indian in me. I got Indian in me. Got Native American in me. <laughs> How I get there? <laughs> I'm just saying, family, and check this shit out. Did you know <laughs> that the last group of Confederate soldiers to surrender <laughs> were Native Americans? Every after after all the West Asians beat the hell out the other West Asians, the only one still giving them problems was the Native Americans. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, my God. So, I, I'm sitting up here like, oh, man. So, then also yesterday, I had an opportunity because something hit me and said, all right. Because we keep we keep hearing about all these partnerships. This is even before I got into this book. I said, all right, cool. So, you know, and a lot of people, you know, and, and I mean, we got all these groups, all these groups. And, and, and the key piece that we got to watch in, in these coming days is that, we got to make sure that we get what we are supposed to get out of all of this shit. I went upstairs to go wake up my my daughters, and in between me leaving here and putting on the commercials and going upstairs, I heard about two um, protests, rebellions going on, people dying. Police, more police brutality, old cases popping up. You know what I'm saying? That they just broadcasting. And sometimes you got to sit back and you got to wonder. You got to wonder. Is are they? Are we being provoked? Is it something that? Is it something that the media wants to see from us? Is it? Are we being tested? You know, but I, I, you know, those, I'm, and it's like, yo, you, so, you, I'm sitting down, so I said, all right, cool. I want to, I want to check out the census. I want to see what, what's up with the census. So, I go back, and I pull up the census from 1960, the census from, well, let's say 1970, 1960, and 1950. I just wanted to look at it to see all of the racial groups on there because you know part of the argument is hey we can't we're not gonna be able to tell who really came from a plantation you're not gonna be able to trace your ancestry (laughs) now family let me just say this when you look at the census and i can pull it up and show you all a little bit later when you look at the census from 1960, you could go 1970, that's right after 1965, 1960, and 1950, two major groups, black and white. And more than likely, if you were black, or as they say it on there, they ain't Negro or black. If you fit one of those, more than likely, more than likely, you can probably trace your ancestors to one of these plantations around here. It's not as hard as people want you to think. See, because people shoot out stuff at us, and we'd be like, well, yeah, that's right. You know, I can't. But we have people right now in our families Because I know my family is not the only one on both sides that have been tracing their family. I've been walking around when I was in college. I was walking around with a little black book. No, not with phone numbers in it. With my family tree in it. I would talk to my grandmothers. I would talk to my grandfather. And I would try to find out little little bits of information. This is one of the reasons why, with the toast, I could go down my family line because I've been asking questions. And I could trace myself back 
to my grandparents being born in the early 1900s, their parents, right, being born before the 1900s, possibly, and their grandparents, right, on both sides of my family. So I want somebody to keep, I, 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 when you hear people say, it's impossible to trace your lineage back. No, you ain't got to be precise. Because let me ask you a question. If you heard about a country that was abusing people that look like you, not even really making it very hard for you to get in the country, not presenting any opportunity for you, anybody look like you, how, how much of a rush would you be in to get to that motherfucker? I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking the question. If there's no opportunity for you, why would you rush to get over there? And we know for a fact, before 1965, they was not letting a lot of us in. So how would it be, how is it hard to find out who was really here Prior to 1965, prior to 1950, prior to 1940. My mom was born in 1949. My dad was born a little bit earlier than that. So I already know that I have roots here. That means my sister has roots here. That means that all my nieces and nephews have roots here. So why do we keep allowing people to say shit like, well, there's no way we can find out who from where? No. No, they, they could tell you exactly how much you made. They could tell you how much they extracted from your grandparents. They could tell you exactly where they live. They, they got all this information. We're able to come up with all this information, but when it comes down to questioning whether or not you should be able to receive a check, they can't figure nothing out. Come on, family. Come on, family. These people know what you ate for lunch yesterday. Matter of fact, they could they could question you and probably tell you what you ate for lunch five years ago. So now, they can't tell where you from. You can't tell. How many of y'all got stories about your family coming from the South? Or even from the East? Got Southern roots. Or got Eastern roots. And when I say Eastern, I'm talking about the, you know, the Eastern, the, the you know, the Eastern Seaboard on the United States. Well, how many of y'all come from, like, out west? Oklahoma, Arkansas, like, because I ran into a um, 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 normal family from Arkansas. That's the Brown clan from Arkansas. My Browns are from um, Georgia, Florida. I ran into some Browns from um, um, Louisiana. So it, we are more than capable of being able to do all that. More than capable. So we need to stop throwing up these uh, self-created limitations. Right? Because, yeah, we got identified. We definitely got identified. But, yo, reparations coming. I'm just letting y'all know. All right. Uh, let's get on with this toast. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Going to the toast screen before I forget. Let me make sure I turned on thing. Oh, by the way, let me give all the Nia babies a round of applause. <laughs> we also want to send congratulations out to Miss CeeLo, right? Because you know she called in, she told us. 
about something that was going to happen. And guess what? It popped up. And unfortunately, we will be losing a sister in Columbus. And she will be moving to another another state. But that means that the tribe is expanding. But I'm trying to tell y'all, man. That, listen, our ancestors is waiting for us. To, all we got to do is ask for what we want. All we got to do is ask for what we want. You know what I'm saying? I mean, especially uh, put in the work and ask for what we want. Or do it at the same time. Put in the work, ask what, what you want. These ancestors are here, family. And they're making, they're making stuff happen. All you have to do is stop doubting them. And stop doubting you. We call it self-imposed limitations in GI Man. There are some actual erected limitations but we make them harder because we put our self-imposed limitations before we even get to the real goddamn limitations so we don't even get to the real limitations to find out whether they're real or not because many of us are dealing with these self-imposed limitations that we place on ourselves So, you know, like I said, here we got it we got to learn to distinguish between the real and the unreal. The real and the unreal. What's real and what's not. I mean, that's the that's the bottom line piece. I have to be able to distinguish between the real and the unreal. For those of us that's dealing that like to throw up terms like my out and shit, that you you need to know that one. The real from the unreal. And I hate to say it, but some of y'all, some of us get so so spiritual that it becomes very unreal. <laughs> but then some of y'all so 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 material that it's very unreal. I remember when I was when I was younger, you know, because like I said, Trying to put all this stuff together, putting the players' pyramid together and stuff like that. I would, I would sit around and ask young people what they want, and I, had a, I had a brother. You know, we sitting around like, what is it you want to? You know, I want to be the first trillionaire. Uh, excuse me, I I want to be a trillionaire. That sounds nice. I, I hear you. So what's your plan? No, man, I, the plan is I just want to be a trillionaire. Get up out. Get the fuck up out of my mouth. Get, get out of my Give me some push-ups. What I tell you about that? I mean, just, you got to have a plan. It's like when I went, I, I used to, I was speaking in South one time, and I had a young man tell me that he was going to become a professional football player. <laughs> I said, "Oh man, listen, all right, cool. You know, um, you know, cause all of the young men were talking about being professional athletes. So when I get around him, I ask him, this is this boy was big. This boy is about six, six four. He had to be, he had to be a, a, a close to three hundred pounds. He didn't look too out of shape." Because the way football season was over, and I'm looking, I'm saying, well, damn, you know, I, you know, I, I, I can see that. You about some of the, you about the same size as some of the people that was doing good um, when I was young. Maybe you faster than you look. I don't know. So I say, all right, cool. What are you doing on a daily basis to move you towards your goal? He said, what you mean? I said, like, are you, are you working out? No. Okay, well, during the football season, you was working out. No, I I don't play football. Huh? Stop playing. You you just said you was going to be a professional football player. So I know you've been playing football. You had to play, at least play football wins. No, I never played football. You playing. Stop playing with me. Stop it. Before I, I'm going to suspend you. I swear to God. I'm not, what, are, what are you talking about? I'm going to be a professional football player. I'm going to walk on 
This is what a young man. I'm going to walk on to the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> help me. Help me. Real from the unreal. Real from the unreal. Uh, I heard you were good at football, Hot Tim. Why didn't you go to the NFL? Well, I was. I was good on a high school level between ninth and tenth grade. At the end of my tenth grade, uh, I made a choice um, that my football coach didn't like, and not even that. Let me say this: and that I was far from pro. I was far from pro. I was able to play a little bit of football. I played a little bit of football, um, and at the end of my tenth grade year. Uh, because I got held back in first grade, I was old enough to do something I always wanted to do. Uh, I found out about a program with the military called um, the Split Option Program, and I was able to go into um, the military during the summer times, which, of course, interfered with football. You know, I was good enough not to get cut from the team. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, that's, 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 where, that, that's where that career ended. You know what I'm saying? Then I start running into real football players and shit. Like, <laughs> nigga, what? How much you weigh? How fast are you? <laughs> nigga, I ain't play. I don't even want to fight you. I, shit. A little, a little bit of football could pay for a lot of education for some of these boys. Yeah, but you got to play. This is all I'm saying. See, but then also we got to understand. Now, a little bit of football. Now, what are you sacrificing when you play football? See, there's a sacrifice there. And there's some people that's really did, that's really designed, got that warrior build to actually do that. But football is not going to get a whole lot of them in school. I mean, if you look at the – if you really do the comparison of – uh uh the the percentage of of athletes to actual students is it's not a it's not a big it's not it don't make a big difference. We need to trick these lazy athletic boys into college. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? And then also we also gotta remember that college is not for everybody. One one of one of the key pieces that that I think sometimes we miss is that we we have been so caught up in this college hustle that we have been um forcing many of our children away from professions that have supported us for 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 years that support everybody you know what i'm saying you can't have an all professional class you know what i'm saying you can't build a world and you can't maintain the world if everybody is a professional who gonna fix the refrigerators who gonna keep the cars running who going to keep the plumbing going? Who going to, I mean, here I'm sitting in the basement right now that needed about 10 different workers in order to get shit to, to function and keep shit functioning in this house. And we jump over that and say, you need to go to college. College is the answer. And we got to realize that college right now is one of the biggest hustles in the world, man. So we, we're, we're pushing our children into a system that we know ain't designed for them to succeed, and we're pushing this whole college piece for even ones that aren't that that we know ain't college material. We, I mean, those of us that went there, we you, you could look and know you wasn't you. It's almost like the you ain't. Why you here? You heard his good parties on Friday night. You know everybody ain't supposed to be going to college, and we need to stop with that. Real from unreal. Let's talk real. Uh, brothers say, wise man told me, teach them baseball. They're actually giving away scholarships to white kids at HBCU because boys don't play baseball. Once again, focus on sports. How many, how many baseball scholarships are there? Right. Just what we need to what we need to force our children into is finding their passion. And finding ways to support that. Then we'll find 
the natural mathematics and the natural professionals and the natural athletes. All we have to do is give our children a space where they feel safe enough where they could go on and express their mastery and their desire, their desires and their love. And then we will find, then we will find where we can direct them. We need to introduce them to as many things as possible. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, I be having arguments in my own house because, like I said, I'm not trying to pressure my son into any one thing. Go and experiment. Like I just got yesterday, I just found out about this uh, this free program. It's a uh, look up gaming, um, gaming machine, gaming. Uh, give me a second. I'll think about it. It's called Unreal Games. Right? So I tell them to go on and, and log on to this because they give free courses in designing games or, or working with computer programs that that basically build games for you. You just got to know how to put the language in and tell it what you want. Sleeping is a passion. Wake up. Sleeping? Oh, you say sleeping is a passion? I'm good at that. Matter of fact, I get some good dreams that I get up and I get up here and talk about it. So you're right. Sleeping is a passion. It can be a passion. But I don't know too many motherfuckers that do have a passion to sleep. I mean, we I, we got some people that like to sit down, which means they might have a passion for a job that requires them to sit down. But sleeping is not a passion. Sleeping is a need. And it's something that we have to do. So I disagree with you on that one. Sleeping is not a passion. Sleeping is a need. And sometimes we can overdo some of the needs because we're depressed. They have sleep church. Oh my, man, who is this? This, I knew it's the white man that slipped in here trying to take away my time. I'm just joking. That's the, that's the great comedian, Kenneth Jackson. Rashid, isn't that what they tell you about your first couple of years of college? Experiment and find what you like. Declared majors at end of sophomore year. Well, they ain't tell us that. <laughs> they just told us to be on time with that money, or they was gonna put us off campus. See, because that right there, Kwame, is how it's supposed to go. But that requires you to be able to afford college. To afford to be able to throw away that little, t most of us when we get when we get when we get into college, I got to know what I want to do right away. Fortunately, I had a scholarship, so I was able. You know, I changed my major about seven times. I remember I was going to be a movie maker. I was going to be the next Indiana Jones. You know what I'm saying? I mean, every every time the strain of weed changed during my college days, so did my major. Shit, I'm a Oh, this is some good way. I'm going to be an astrophysicist. Oh, God. No, 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 no. It's not ast... Physical therapist. I'm... But I, I do like movies. Strain of weed changed, my major changed. You know what I'm saying? Depending on how the weed was flowing, my major adjusted. I had time. I I, I had that luxury. That's a luxury to be able to go to college and be able to wait till your sophomore year to declare. You know what I'm saying? When you got a loan out and you got all this money, you got to know what you need and what you want. Um, But I'm sorry. Go ahead. He said, Rashid. I know who you are. How did you actually get to college? Expound. I got to college because I knew how to talk to people. <laughs> I I had an okay score on on um ACT and I had I had a a, a black uh a, I had a black vice principal um at Garfield High School. I, I remember his first name Clemens. I can't remember his last name, but he was an alpha and um he really, really pushed for me to go to college. As a matter of fact, when my mom moved to Columbus, she went to go talk with him. 
and he convinced her not to take me from Garfield or take me out of out of high school at that time um, because he said I was doing good um, and that uh, not only um, if I kept working in the way I was, I would be able to get a scholarship to, to, to college. And he was right. And, and he made sure that I stayed out of trouble and, and, and all that. So I had I had the right people. I had the right temperament. Um, and I knew how to talk to people. So when I went before the people that uh, was offering the scholarship, you know what I'm saying? I didn't do the most impressive writing. I didn't um, I didn't have the highest grades. But I, my grandparents and my family, let me just put, my family taught me how to deal with people. They taught me, I mean, uh, you will be surprised how a basic, how, how are you doing? And really looking at somebody and really expecting them to respond to how you doing. You will be really surprised how many doors that can open up, especially for a young person. You know what I'm saying? Or being able to talk in front of a group of people. You know what I'm saying? I had always been forced to be able to talk in front of people. And me being able to do that and being able to to approach people and to have conversations and to interest them, to get them interested in me, made it possible for me to go to Ohio State on um, on an academic scholarship. Wasn't the grades. My grades was okay. It was plenty of people with better grades than me. Plenty of people with, better, high, with higher ACTs than me. But very few people that were that could possibly get up and entertain people with intelligent conversation and be bold enough to and be be bold enough to say what's on my mind um hold on how did you actually go um liberal arts college education he said liberal arts versus college education Uh uh-oh uh-oh the black you rashid you're getting the black yo to start it man can i do the toast can can i do the toast I, I just want to know if I can do the toast. That's 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 all I want to know, brother Rashid. Can can we start this sharing stories on how well or ill prepared we were? D two enter the college experience. D two enter the college. It didn't come out right. Whatever you was trying to say, I, I'm trying to figure that out. It says sharing stories on how well or ill prepared we were to oh to enter the college experience. Word, right. I wasn't prepared, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. Be, having the ability to 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 communicate with people, um, and and surround myself with people that can help me. You know what I'm saying, and having people available to help me, man. Because there was a lot of times I was just ready just to just just get up and just quit, but I had, you know what I'm saying mentorship family being able to build family make it very possible for you to be able to overcome almost anything because i was you know i wasn't ready okay i guess that's the water sign meaning i can go and put oh thank you mr rashid we really appreciate you here he said you were neither i find that hard to believe kwame I find that hard to believe. Now, because first off, now let me say this. One of the first things I had to really adjust to was the amount of freedom. (laughs) Was the amount of freedom that I was exposed to my first night of staying in the dorms. I, I had no idea. I was not prepared. Right? The first week of being able to stay in the dorm, right? Absolutely having no curtain, nothing. Just like I got a bed, and I could I could choose to sleep in that one, or I could, cause you got we had girls on one floor. I, I said, "Well, goddamn, this this is the life, right?" I'm sitting up here like, "Whoa, I wasn't ready." Brother Kwame said, I would call in after the toast and talk to how ill-prepared I was. Wow. Wow. So, but that um, that, that mentorship is very, very important. Um, 
Brother, Brother Rashid said the slaves had to adjust to freedom as well. Some of you went back to the plantation. Ah, now you're moving on to another subject because I, I kind of, that's a little bit different. That's a little bit different. They, ain't, they we got to understand, they didn't, they didn't go back to the plantation because of the, the freedom. A lot of them were forced back or had to go back because there was no other place for them to get no goddamn money. That's one of those that's one of those illusions. We didn't go back because we weren't used to freedom. We went back because we was broke. <laughs> Hell, we couldn't even leave. Where am I go? I ain't got shit. I ain't got a mule. I got all this shit. And all these. Where, where am I going? Well, I might as well stay right here. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, like I said, these are part of the myths. Then return back to the plantations. Because of freedom, we turned. If we went back anywhere, it was because of it was because of economics. There's a whole prison system ba- built up on grabbing black men that wasn't working. Whole prison system was built up on that shit. He said, "When slavery is the best option." <laughs> well, many of us live in that reality right now. But anyway, on to the toast. We got that Ambrosia family. The batches will be, I, I'm going to bottle, I think I'm going to bottle them up tonight. I was supposed to bottle them up yesterday and do my show, but I was like, ah, fooey. I'm tired. Ah. When, oh, that's going to be your book? When Slavery is the Best Time <laughs> Shit by Abdul Rashid. All right. So we're going to go on. That was very undramatic. Ambrosia, what's going on with you? But I see you still alive. I see you still eating. So, fam, we got that Ambrosia. We'll be available. I'm, I'm, I'm taking orders. I got some orders already. So, don't miss out because this batch is going to be good. And healthy. Get your probiotics. I'm going to make a song. Get your probiotics here. But anyway, we about to toast. First off, lift up our glass to our creator by whatever name you choose to call it creator. We lift up our glass and we salute that creator by whatever name you choose to call that creator. We lift up our glass and we say the word of power, the word that brings us together, the word that vibrates out into the universe and pulls all of our energy together. We lift up our glass and we say that mighty word. I say, for that family, we move on to our list of our ancestors. And if anybody out there that's new and you want to add your ancestors to the list because we toast every day, go ahead, feel free. I'll start off with the list and go as far as I can. Okay, because Cleve been moving stuff around again. It's called a gaming engine. That's what it's called. And the one that I went to, the one I, that I had Cleve go to was called... Uh, I can't remember. I said it earlier. I remember now it's a gaming engine. Now I can't remember what it is. But even those of you, check out check check out the site. Just type in gaming engine and see all the stuff. Because there's a lot of free software and a lot of free lessons out there. For some of for, for some of you that play games as well as some of your children. So that you can start understanding because like uh a lot of stuff seems confusing when you first get into it. All you gotta do is all you gotta do is just jump into it. Um, from cursive to cursing, the breaking down of language communication in 2020 by Abdul Rashid. Are these books by you, or is another Abdul Rashid? From cursing to cursive, or is it from cursive to cursing? I I made that journey. So we're gonna lift up our glass to our ancestors. Miles Brown, Ms. Ann, Robert the Texan, Davis Hunter Brown, Senior Rosalie Tilly, Georgia William, Walter, Chris, Fanny Gaston, Eileen, Uncle Chris, I'm Fiend, Cleveland, Geneva, Brown, Margaret, Ellis, Wash Ellis, 
Cecil Ellis, Avar Brown, Gina Gaines, Herman Brown II, Barbara Twiggs, Wash Ellis Jr., Katie Ellis, Nikki Ellis, Jamon Jones, Jeremiah Tappan, John Falar, Montague Pimenel, No More X, Pat Ma, Rob, Malika Fakur, Dr. Marianne Williams, Kojo Kamal, Elder Farmer, Elder Millie Dixon, Tony Clark, Pastor Yusuf Weston, Elder Ogeny, Elder Ron Coleman, Elder Robert Donaldson, Alfred Brough, Row, Hector Jr., J. Edwards, Carlisle Harris, Grace Lundy, Inez Harris, William Bill Moss, Phyllis Rose, Sterling and Lucy Wright, Dag L. Pulling the Luxor Brother, Miss Eda Brooks Crawley, Miss Marie Nelson, Mr. Frederick Crawley, Sr., Miss Jerry Brunson, Mr. Alonzo Johnson, Jr., Miss Jerry, wait, Miss Alonzo Johnson, Alonzo Johnson. Oh, my mind is slipping. We ain't even make it that far today, family. And I'm not even ashamed. I'm going to just grab the list and we're going to do it. Miss Jerry Brunson, Miss Lance Johnson, Miss Marie, Marie McDowell, Jen Foster, Charles Jordan, Gail Smith, Walter Smith, Richard Trey, Francis Johnson, Mary Franklin, Jimmy Williams, Daniel Ford, George Gibson, Nana Lorella, Clark, and Ezra McCray. Chris Clark, Frankie Justice, Katie Justice, Dick Rinderman, Virginia Rogers, Reverend Jane Smith, Lewis Henderson, Kevin Spradley, Mary Elizabeth Walker, Raymond Walker Sr., Sarah Jane Carter, Michael Ford Jr., Kellen D. Russell, Susie B. Smith, Teresa Clay, Mel Del Hodge, Mel Del Hodge Jr., Herman Copeland, Mildred Copeland, Jenny Clay, Bird, B.D. Sale, Willow, Vita Farm, I go to Sue. Show Harvey, Aunt Charmaine, Aunt Evelyn, Theolis Hasbury, Harvey Hasbury Sr., Leonard Dickinson, T.C. Islam, Terrell Dunbar, Will Thomas, Seth Berry, Mark Walsh, Merle B. Thorne, Percy, Thorne, Nada Johnson, Florence M. Carter, Joan Thorne, Eric, Trisha Lewis, Juanita Wright, Robert Wright, George Wright, Mary Eliza. Frederick Davis, Mayor Elizabeth Rogers, May Esther, Keach Larice, Linda Watson, Hammonds, Jarrell Giles Watson, Sparrow, Slimmy, Selvin Lewis, Andrew Holmes, per, um, Pearl, um, Andrew Holmes, Pearl Moore, Percy Moore Jr., Mildred Owens, Booker T. Bowden, Charlie Hunt, Sammy Stover, Hedda Pearson, Sergeant Thornton, Richard Thornton, Davina Hall, Freeman Banks, Jermaine Moss, Ophelia Peacock, Willie Thornton, Napoleon Kenty, Mark Ramsey, Paul Ramsey, Matt Ramsey, David Ramsey, Charles E. Thornton, Frankie Quills, Urania Thornton, Bernie Quills, Ernestine Jackson, Frankie Johnson, Teresa Mormon. Leon Johnson, Charles Bell, Vivian Ramsey, Essie Johnson, Derrida Johnson, Leon Johnson, James W. West, Senior James Parham, Dana Jones, Henry Will, Jay Farmer, Mary Chavez, Leon Grace, Bessie Johnson, Anna Levester, Mary Moreland, Paul Moreland, Elder Caleb, Rose Mary Martinier, Dan Ted Wellman, Fred Douglas Trick, Senior Thelma Trick, Thomas Lula Berry, Lacey Ellen Ohio, Frank Russell and Davis, Fred Douglas Trick, the second Vinnie Trick, Reverend Andy Moore, Helen Fuller, Eugene Jackson, Senior Richard Ellis, Alice Alexander, Charles Maxwell, Percy Matt Alexander, Arthur Reynolds, Stanley Lockhart, Ricky Lockhart, Wynn Lockhart, which will lock our brand Porter, Deacon Hargrove, Carlos Sawyer, Andrew Parker, Doris Donald, Ezra Murphy, Tamika Russ, Denny Monet, Gina Rupe Jones, Jana Callahan. We have William Walter West, Nigel LaPage, Jada Basiji Fulani, Jim Robinson, Gladys Johnson, Valerie Clark, John and Mary Sullivan, Dirk Johnson, Antonio Johnson, Denise Walter, Dupree Designs, Anna's Boston, Gander Boston, Winter Priest, Gunnerberry, Wilson Head, Wilson Headley, Elma Hyde, Phyllis Lee, Eugene Spradling, Kevin Spradling, Charles Wooden, Prenny Brown, Roy Lee Printup Jr., Miriam Johnson, Wilbur Longmire, Ian Candy, Janice Carter, Michael Carter, Leanne Pina Carter, Mark Carter, William, Car- uh, William Carter, Lisa Jordan, Charles Lee Mosley, Dorothy R. Blair, Russell Bevin Sr., Sam Evans Sr., Nalon Blair, Sr. Edward Stevens, Sue Ann Stevens, Joe Davis, Timothy Butler, Gene Holmes, Dana Jones, Peter Charles, Christy Nichols, Carter Robinson, Rosemary Charles, Ada Pearl, Bob Ingalls, Jack Wallace, Warren M. Finch, Warren P. Finch, Tim Ingalls, Audrey Finch, William Billingsley Jr., Jennifer Sensiball, Hazel Gaston, Jerry Brownlee, Brian Watson Jr., Kaniko Parsons, Jason Kathy Bradford, Thomas Bradley, also known as Uncle Pookie, also known as Gypsy, Reverend Roosevelt, Word the First Ace, Trash, Frank Smith, Mother Bertha, Michael Leonard, David Brown, Ruth Carter, June Cox, Ruth Cox, Paula Cox, Ronald Irvin, Judy Hubbard, Irene Johnson, Francis Booth, Jefferson, Dan Wilkerson, Senior Member, McClendon, Jerry Doyle, Mina Robinson, Mary Nichols, Patricia Williams, Subraka Teray, Greg G. Two Gibson, Donnie Hill, Richard Gleavis, Lee Irvy, Tommy Irvy, Boy Irvy, Jim Goshe, George and Hallie Johnson, Archie and Margaret Armstead, Diane Scott, Erica Armstrong, Claire Fox, Gene Evans, Archie Beck, Anna McGill, Charles McDaniel, Christine Cottrell, Aunt Becca, Alice Arnold, Arthur Arnold, Hattie Reed, Charles Reed, Eula and Andrew Baker, Patricia and Edwin Brooks, Gwendolyn and Bob Hatch, Kimball Vernon, Bradley Kim, Janie, Harriet Tubman Cates, Spencer Sturgis, Sally Mae Baker, Ethel Baker, Geneva, uh, Creola Baker, Geneva Baker, Aaron Nino Baby Hatch, I've seen Mally Miller, Halsey Hatch, Dad Cleveland, Mother Gibson, Alex Nixon, John Bowie, Lester and Rachel Saunders, Dorita Ross, Rolla Ross, Robert Nelson, Francis Stevenson, Leroy Stokes, Neely Johnson, Fletcher Swan, Manny and Charlie Scott, Ada Casey, Thomas Cooper, Vivian Stevenson, Mona Ann Lewis, Cornetta Lyman Lewis, John Jackson, William Dallas Lewis, Mary Francis, Chappelle Jackson, Michael Slade, Joanne Perkins, Richard Jackson, Martha Ford Dawson, Big Mama, Nanny Harris, Eva Ford, James Harrison, Margaret Towns, Mary Williams, Leroy Q. Heath Sr., Albert Moore, Miss Vanilla, Albert Motley, Geraldine Elizabeth, Douglas Thompson, Erton Houston, Led Alls, Elijah Alls, Jerome Alls, and West Staten, Joe Jamel Alls, and Pierce, Donald Carter, Lily Green, Nathan Green, Beth Vaughn, John Dewey, Ruth Beard, Tim Butler, Raymond Lord Newton, J.B. Foggy, Thomas Newton Sr., Bubba Naeem, Jeanette Sanders, J.C. Sanders, Roy Pruitt, H.J.
Minnie Wilson, Captain Sandy, Muriel Ellis, Elizabeth Sanders, Henrietta Irby, Mildred Armstead, Margaret Armstead, Catherine Anthony, Ruby Brown, Charles Walker Sr., Charlie Walker, Cecil Russell, Diane Irvin, Harun Phillips, William Ford, Margaret Logan, Phyllis Barnett, Lee Irvin Sr., Michael Irvin, Ozella Watson, Hugo Washington, Charles Cowell Sr., Robbie Lee Carwell, Nevaeh Mitchell, Ron McCormick Sr., Sabrina Easley, Rashad Easley, Javier McCormick, Barbara Ann Reed, Dorothy Ann Reed, John Reed, Cheka Maha Reed Jr., John Reed Jr., Patricia Reed, Edward R. Benson Sr., Ethel H. McNair, Lois Fernandez, Jacqueline Broaddus, Reginald Alvarez, Mazarin Coper, George Swan, Imani Grayson, Charles Scott, Charles A. Scott, Michael Morgan, Charlie Morgan, Sybil Edwards McNabb, Andy Ferguson, William Ferguson, Shelby McClendon. Moving to the Black Book. Black Book coming, Black Book coming. We got two other jobs, James Carswell. We got Little Brother Adams, also known as Isis. Guy Elder Shaka McNair, Anthony Brown, Jonathan Ford, Lottie Gauche, Cousin Tony, Michael Johnson, Jane Jimmy Johnson, Barbara Shang Lewis, Ronald Sheldon Jr., Damian Top, Westina Banks. We got Joseph Bingham, Quincy, Mama, Aunt Lady, Abraham Isaac Cundiff, Aunt Barbara Lewis, Renee Johnson, Joy, Ryan Ross Wiggins, Jermonte, Marcus Price, Ness Words, Marshawn, Marshawn McCarroll, Demetrius Beard, Herb Jefferson, Ralph Mickens, Eric Walker, Quasi Sample, Candace Simmons, Summer Clayton. We got Leonard Jones, Sade Garner, Melvin Scott Sr., Elder Clarence Lumpkin, Elizabeth Johnson, Mr. Thornton, Johanna. We got Desandra, Lynette Lewis, Henderson Mosley, Charles Jordan, Henry Essex II, Fanny L. Webb, Dan Walton, Al T. Sue Walton, Emma Walton, James Randolph Giles, Sonny, Pete Walton, William Walton, Fred Powers. We got Elijah Juan, Hakeem, and Como, Alberta T. Davis, Charles Davis, Willie R. Mackey, also known as Dr. Creamy Mackey, Victor Bowden, Trisilla Kitty Berger. Lucy White, Robert Lee White, Emma Jean White, Talton, Roger White, R.L. White, Jesse White, Ruby Jewel White, Jessica Carl White, Desi Woods, Tillard Woods Lennox, Jim Woods, Lizzie Woods, Juanita Alexander Brown, Cynthia Ann Wright, Richard Dorsey, Annie Simpson, Jamara Simpson, Regina Hopkins, Joseph Simpson, Nettie Dorsey, Eleanor Hopkins, Edward Webster, Alice Webster, Ivy Webster, Arnella Willis, Ethel Lane, Samantha DeMond, Ethel Marshall, Steve Dougie Shelton, William Bill Walker, Carl Rico Johnson, Kim Gray, Stuart A. Johnson, Edward Young III, Isaac Jackson Sr., Drusilla Merle, Wayne Young, Christina Young, Thomas Young, Frank Merle, Sylvester Foster, James and Lizzie Winston, Amy and Julia Lawrence, Ozell Leathers Sr., Gladys Cofer, Ozell Leathers Jr., Geneva Jackson, R.J. Lacey, also known as Tooth of Dime, Sable Winston, Chris Kenny, Margaret Mitchell, Mary Smith, Juanita, Florine, no, Wynette, Florine Stith Gibbs, Carl William Duncan Jr., Janet Callahan, Denny Hill, Miko D. Nice here, Andre Martin, Mabel Williams, Terry Brown, Teresa Biddle, Levana Kincaid, Carla Sawyer, Reverend Jesse Porter, Deacon Ezekiel Dennis, Brenda Porter, Craig Lee Jones, Granny Beulah, Papa Al Riesler, Arnett Smith, George Gamble Sr., Joseph Gare, LaShonda Jamar, Leroy Riley. We got Mona Yolanda Hunter, Yvonne Patrice Turner, Herman Reeves, Amanda Reeves, Josh Reeves, Lena Kate, Herman Reeves, Pam Johnson, Vera and Reeves Fisher, Jerry Johnson McCallop. Also known as Mama Moon, Sheila Ann Lee, Panchita Alba, Donald Brooks, Barbara Moses, Ida Spate, and Era Branson. We got Eric Winston. We got Nation Builder Darren Bridges. And we got Francisco Matisse, also known as Sonny. Also, um, because while I was while I was doing it, we look well, hold on. We lift up our glass, we salute all of our ancestors, family, realizing the hell for African, hell for ADOS, hell for our people. It's being forgotten. And here at Gami Journey, we strive never, never to forget those people that contributed to us, that contributed to our lives, right? So we lift up our glass and we salute each and every last one of them. We thank them for the blessings that they gave us while they was in this plane with us, and we definitely thank them for the blessings that they've given us now that they're on the other side. We lift up our glass. And we salute them, we say our shay. And why I'm here, because we're moving into the moment. Uh, Sister Janice Riley has dropped another podcast. So go and check it out. Words from the teacher. As a matter of fact, I, I, I got it on my timeline. So you go to Jeremy Journey and you can get it. Uh, we have the Yoni Fest coming up on October 16th and October 17th. Right? It's a Yanni Fest. And where the Yanni is, I want to be. So I'm going to be there. Yes, I am. Y'all think I'm joking. Yes, I am. I'm gonna, 
I'm going to go check out the Yanni Fest. But it's Yoni. Am I saying it right? Is it Yanni? Or Yoni Fest. Be popping off. Um, I'll get all the other information. I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna inter- interview her. Also, I'm going to try to bring uh, Sister Janice on. She might join us. She might have joined us last night if I was if I was up to uh, do the show. But I went up for the show last night. But since we're in a moment, I want to throw those things out right there right now. And also, family, last but not least, before we continue with it, go on to gnj.media and sign up. Now, this is the issue. You will not be able to chat on our, sh- <clears throat> on our stuff if you do not have a video. So this means you have to upload a introduction video telling the family who you are. You know what I'm saying? Is this somebody I want to chat with? Or is this somebody I want to chat with? It don't necessarily even have to be a video. It could be an audio. I don't just something where you're where where people can comment on. If you ain't doing nothing, then you you won't get seen on GNJ Media. Just putting it out like that. Um, Rashid, you uh you uh, what I you got some type of position on there. I'll put you on there or something. I don't remember what. Like somebody that could throw people off or something like that. Gave you, I know, I know you power hungry, so I gave you a little, just, a little, just a little taste. I ain't want, I ain't want to get you drunk on power, so I gave you just a little taste. But you gotta go in there and put a video on, letting people know who you are. Um, and brother Kwame, um, the issue that you asked me about with the site, um, I spoke to Dentista, and he said he gonna work on that when he get off vacation. All right, so family, now we moving to the present moment, lifting up our glass, saluting this moment. Once again, we want to give all of the Nia babies a round of applause. <laughs> y'all deserve it. Y'all deserve it. Y'all got one my I love y'all color, especially on a black woman. Ain't no. Yellow on a black. Oh, my God. Just thinking about it, I get, you know, I'm old, man. I, my body heats up. And, whew. But yeah, yeah. Black women in yellow. Yep, yep, yep. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And the darker, the better. I mean, it look like, oh my God. Some of y'all be looking like big old, uh, big old bumblebees. I just be like, ooh, I wish I had. Cause see, a lot of young people ain't old enough to remember when you used to go outside and catch bumblebees with jars. <laughs> I'll be like trying to sneak up on your ass and <laughs> catch you in that goddamn jar. Come on, c- coming home with me, right? I love it. But anyway, back to the moment, this sacred moment. Ooh, but black women in yellow dresses. Lord have mercy in yellow. Ooh. Right, anyway, um, just a thing. Just a personal. Ooh. Just a personal thing. Yeah. All right. Out my mind. Get out my mind. Get out my mind. Get out. Get out. All right. But in this moment, family, we want to lift up this moment, right? And right now, we are on Nia. And for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go to G&J. Free in, free G and J E course so that you go learn the lingo of the tribe. We got a course, right? If you want to be part of, we got a course, right? That you you go through and you can learn the language. Be like, yo, I want to. Hey, hey, how can I be down? We got a course. We got some more courses come out. Speaking of that, I was working with Elder Darrow on Ujima. So his first, we gonna have probably after next Ujima. I'm saying in a couple of weeks we are gonna have his first session that's gonna be coming out. He took me up on my offer and he came and and we've been working and uh, we're gonna have an interview about what he put together and, and it's coming together nice. So the other coming out doing his thing. And and it's really going to help a lot of people, especially during this COVID time. And we don't know what else is coming, but helping helping us be able to stay um, uh, physically healthy in a confined space. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, what I mean, just it's going to be tight. So here we go. Back to the moment. Lifting up a glass, saluting this 
saluting this moment. Oh, let me put that up there for y'all. Some of y'all might want to get it. Let's see. Oh, no, that's not it. E. Bow. That's some bullshit. Get up there. That ain't what I... Get. Oh, they acting up on my chat. So it's free gnjecourse.com. Free gnjecourse.com. So let me go and see if I can put this doc down here because they tripping on me right now. I want the chat. Let's see. Boom, where you at, chat? There you go. Oh, they going to make me. Oh, you going to make me sign in? For real? Is that how y'all? In the moment. We lift up our glass on this great day of Nia. Family, as I do on a regular basis, I want you to get focused. I want you to find Nia today. Activate your reticular formation. Get out there in the world. Nia is out there. And for those that don't speak the language, Nia means purpose. So, family, get out there. We are looking for purpose. It's people out there right now operating on purpose. Right? Are you operating on purpose? Or are you operating on accident? Are you living on purpose? Or are you living on accident? Right? Let, we got In order for us to move to the next level, we got to be honest with ourselves. Some of y'all living totally accidental lives. Don't let me say some of, some of y'all. Some of us are living total accidental lives. You need to get some of that purpose. Some of that near. Get it in your life. How do you do it? You got to first be able to identify it. You got to put a word on it. The word is near. You got to put the word on it. Oh, that's near. That's what near look like. Ooh. Let me let me model that behavior. Let me actually let me copy that behavior. Huh. All right, but anyway. So near near is today. Today is near. For those who don't speak the language, near means purpose. The model principle for the day is balance. The color is yellow. The hermetic law is rhythm. Male name is Kofi. Female name is a four. How you doing, a four? So, family, we raise our glass to this present moment because in this moment is our power. In this moment and what we do with this moment will determine what our people will be doing in the future. So be careful with the moment. Be careful with the moment. Please don't waste it. We lift up our glass and we say our shame. From their family, where do we go? From the moment, we move to all of our, uh, to the future generations. We lift up our glass, we toast our babies, our babies' babies, our children, our children's children, on to infinity. And as long as we handle our business, we'll always be here. But enough of us start wasting our, most of, um, um, enough of us start wasting our moments and we will disappear, we will disappear from the face of the world and the face of history you know what i'm saying so we got to be careful lifting our glass and we say ashe from their family we move to all of our relations and we toast all of our relations we say ashe from all of our relations you ready from all of our relations we move to that selfish toast and the question is what is it that you need right now to move into your greatness this is what we pulling into the room right now we call the ancestors here First, we called the creator. Now we got our ancestors. We got our present moment. We got our future generations. We got all of our relationships. We got all of this energy that we're conscious of right now. And in this moment, I'm asking you for a selfish toast for yourself, not for nobody else. This is for you because you can't help nobody else until you help yourself. So the question is, what is it that you need in this moment, in this moment right now, that you need to make your life better? To move towards your greatness. We lift up our glass. And we say our shame. From their family. We move to our tribe. And I'm lifting up my tribe. I'm Giami. I'm asking you what's your tribe. Post it up. Post it up. You know what I'm saying? Like I said. Toast your tribe. Because a tribe is nothing but a group of families. And I'm blessed enough to have a group of families. That's working together. And building together. Right? I have a tribe that's in the village. That's doing some goddamn work. Or better yet, some God-blessed work. Let's say that. All right, lift up the glass. We say our shame. From their family, where do we go? All right, 
So we didn't toast that. So I want to toast the most magnificent, the most beautiful, the most uplifting, the most outstanding, the most empowering. Did I say strong? Did I say inspirational? Right? Individual in the room right now. I'm lifting my glass up to you. And we say, I say, I say, I say. Family, I wish you peace, power, joy, and 100 years. And as we say, in Giammi, cat in. Because you know why? Because this is our thing. Goddamn. Ooh, and. Ambrosia, what you do to me? Mm, mm, mm. All right, family, in about two weeks, I will be having, I'm trying, I'm trying, I want to try to get my hands on about 30 pounds of them greens, because they went in one, they went in an hour, so I got to get 30 pounds, so we close to getting 100 pounds, I keep on telling y'all, I want, I want to try to get my hands on 100 or more pounds a month, right? Or, you know, even by we live. Listen, I'm telling you, greens could be a staple that will move us to another level. But anyway, Brother Kwame wanted to call in, so let me go on and make that happen. So that you go. we're going to open up the black line. The black line is open, 614. Well, we'll be, give me a second, 614-556-4535. We, uh, it appears that we are streaming at 4,878 kilobits per second. Key frame rate, two. 30 frames per second at 1280. 720p. Once I plug in this big computer over this three-day weekend, I'm going to try. I think we're going to try to be streaming at. Uh, no, I don't want the camera on. Y'all know I don't like the camera on. Why y'all playing games with me? Better stop playing with me. Who, somebody, oh, Kwame already on the line. Kwame then got on and took over the line. Look at that. He already on the line. He ready. Uh, hello? What's happening? What's going on, my friend? So, we were talking about, uh, <laughs> Uh, it more or less how we tripped up into college, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so, uh, you know, I attended the Catholic school up until my junior year. So academically, I was prepared. <clears throat> However, I didn't really have anyone to, to guide my steps as such. Uh, had I stayed at the Catholic school, there would have been, you know, maybe some help there. However, <clears throat> had I stayed at the uh, Catholic school, I'd not have been able to support my baseball skills. Mm. So uh, I transferred to uh, the public school my junior year. Now, the public school where my best friend uh, also attended. Now, uh, he was a senior. He was um, uh, basically a track star. And um, he and I were basically experiencing the same kind of thing. But on the other hand, whereas he went to the counselor and they told him basically he'd be better prepared to go into the military, mm. um, you know, he just did what he did, you know, he ran track and of course, well, not of course, but uh, our track team won state that year. And uh, he was leading the way in terms of leading our track team to state. So Ohio State offers him a track scholarship. And I will end his story on this note. He to this day still holds the record in the 300 meter run. Now, up to this day, and considering that you're about day. 10 years older than me, this means that minus the seven, <laughs> um, let me see, divided with the square root of, so you talking about, he been holding this record since 1947? No, he been holding this record since <laughs> <clears throat> 
Somewhere about eighty seven, somewhere around there. Eighty seven. Uh, that's when I. That's when I went there. But that's that. That's. But so he, because B- B- Butch Reynolds and it was with, all up he in ran there with Butch Reynolds. He and Butch Reynolds were on the same uh, four by four, and they wow. had uh, they had broken the record, the four by four record for the Big Ten at one point. Okay. They had that. Um, <clears throat> um, so. Now, my story. So, I'm at uh, the public school. Um, you know, I'm I'm an athlete, but not all like that. So, you know, I played football. I played basketball just to, quote, unquote, stay in shape for uh, uh, baseball, right? <clears throat> so, I get to the baseball team, and ironically, these 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 guys I'm playing baseball with. We had been playing baseball since we were like eight years old together, and when I say together, I'm saying we played in the same league, and more so together in that we all made the all star team. So our all star team, you know, would travel and do things together. So we were a tight knit group, and. We knew each other's ways, and so we were strong. <clears throat> right. So uh, our junior year, you know, it was it was okay, but it wasn't where we wanted to end up. So now we go to our senior year. Senior year, now keep in mind, at this point, I know I want to go to college, have no clue how I'm going to get there, and how it's going to be paid for. So hold on, hold on, hold on, Kwame, question. So you mean to tell me that you weren't planning to go to college for math? Right, but I'm going to let you, don't don't, don't ruin it, don't finish the story. No, 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 let me say it this way. Math was my quote-unquote first love. Um, So that was always in the back of my mind. But again, you know, no plan on how I was going to get there. Um, so, so basically I was just free floating and, uh, my best friend had not, uh, Ohio state offered him a full ride. He wouldn't have known how he was going to get there to college or how it would be paid for. And so back to my story, <clears throat> So I'm, you know, having a, he- a heck of a senior year, right? You know, my first <laughs> first seven hits of the year are doubles. <laughs> uh, that year, leading the team in everything except home runs as far as, uh, uh, you know, batting and singles, doubles, triples, and that kind of stuff. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. But still. I don't know how the hell I'm going to get into college or pay for it. Um, So we get called into a meeting. Our baseball team gets called into a meeting one day, and our coach is talking to us, and, you know, and he starts mentioning, it's like, yeah, you know, uh, our star pitcher got a scholarship to Bowling Green, and, you know, and so everybody's clapping about that. Our shortstop got a scholarship to somewhere, you know. Everybody's clapping about that. And then he says, and Calvin Keechler is being offered $14,000 a year to go to Oberlin College. Now, keep in mind, brother, I was not prepared. I had not taken any ACTs, any SATs since I was a freshman. And those were what you refer to as those uh, pre, you know, pre SAT right. or pre ACT kind of tests, right? Right. But I did real, you know, I did exceptionally well in them. But the point is, is that <laughs> I had not taken any of those things. But so this is when I say, okay, so this is an opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. I still don't know how the hell to prepare, really. Now keep in mind, this is my senior year, man. <laughs> 
And it's not like there weren't plenty of coaches coming and talking to me throughout the baseball season as such, but, you know, if they weren't really ready to pay for everything, then, you know, I <laughs> ain't got no holler for them. I don't have the means, right? Right, right. <clears throat> and so, and so, uh, now, at summer, my grandmother pass away, passes away in early August. And school starts in late August. Now, the freshmen are supposed to be there, of course, a week before, you know, for orientation and all that kind of stuff. I miss orientation because I'm attending my grandmother's funeral. Now, just to add a little more context, my grandmother was raising, in fact, my mother was killed when... I was seven. My grandmother took me and eight of my brothers and sisters into her home. And so up until from seven to 16 is when my grandmother had a stroke. So now um, most of my other brothers and sisters are out. Well, all my older brothers and sisters are out the house, so the only ones who were remaining at the house with grandma at that point was my baby sister, me, and we had a cousin who lived in the boarding house um, uh, that was attached to our house. So um, your grand wait, so your grandma, so anyway. your grandma owned property. Yes, she had a restaurant, a boarding house next door. Um, and then an apartment kind of uh, boarding house, if you will, next door to, um, it was basically <clears throat> upstairs. Uh, you know, it was like an apartment upstairs and then our home. Right. And so, um, so there was that. And um, was taken in by my sister. Uh, and, you know, that experience is, a, you know, something that could be talked about maybe later, but the point is that um, I was completely unprepared. Um, after my grandmother's funeral, I load a suitcase full of clothes and, you know, little incidental things. I was a diabetic, so I had to have insulin, needles, and all that kind of stuff. I go to Oberlin. And because I have no place to stay, I go straight to the uh, the rec center because that's where my baseball coach is. And I come into his office and I say, Coach, I'm here. And I explain to him, I do not have a dorm to stay in. I do not have, you know, I have nothing as far as what... <laughs> What is needed to be at school. Yeah, to be there. Right? On top of that, no money either. Correct. Um, well. Hello? Kwame. I Qua think he, we lost Kwame. I think you pushed him off with your old mean self. Why are you always doing stuff like that? I ain't always you Because everybody like just that. seen you slide I'm over there. I think you did it. Fingers. I, Yo, fat finger nigga. <laughs> I'm just kidding. How you doing this morning, my dear? I'm doing okay. I was just tuning in to uh, be a participant in your current events that you did go through down the GNJ uh, timeline. Cool. You got you got you, you got off. some more current events for us? No, I'm just gonna roll with whatever you whatever. All right, you're but now, about. well, you do got a current event because you got a show that's supposed to be starting now. Come on, I can't be. Uh, you you supposed okay, to be teaching me to okay. promote well, game. Yes, yes, I do have a show coming for me and a few other people. Brother Lumala will be on there with his wisdom, as as well as a sister named D and uh, sister Shady Sunglasses. She calls herself, but um. You know, it's called Blunt Talk. And basically, it's um, where we're going to bring information, discuss topics, and we're going to give it to you blunt. Mm. 
Um, like I like it. It's not blunt doesn't mean rude. We're just gonna be blunt with the truth. Well, We're sometimes you gotta be rude. To, um, Actually, some people like it like that. I like it so when you. It's, it's gonna be a little bit edgy, you know. But you know, there's a purpose for the edginess. Trust right. me when I tell you. You know, what I'm saying it's for a particular audience. I'm trying to draw a new audience and not continue to uh, just just get new people in. I'm just trying to get attract a crowd that we may not typically attract and then drop some knowledge on them. That's all I'm trying to do. Go ahead. Um, well, you what? Now, if you're gonna do that, you can't tell them that, baby. You can't. Well, I'm just letting people know be, because it's early. It's you will be a hurt. You will be. I'm going to be attracting. They you, ain't even listening right now, so you be bitch. you be a horrible hunter. I got a trap. I, I it's a trap <laughs> over here. No, right here. The crowd, I'm li- the crowd I'm looking for. They're not tuned in at the moment, but I guess they can play and listen to the replay. But exactly, oh we got we got but a lot you of people. Know, that's all right. It's cool, but I, you know, everybody, we gonna give we gonna give a round of applause to uh, uh, um, Sister Navita. She got her show popping off. She she started her college career, but we gonna let Brother Kwame get back in. But somehow he got disconnected. I think Navita has something to do with it, Kwame. I'm just gonna say that. As soon as soon, soon, soon as you slid off, she slid over and she was already she had her throat clear. You know she got to clear her throat. Her throat was she didn't have to clear her throat. It was all perfectly. It was secret. It was too secretized. I'm just saying. But go ahead, brother Kwame. So you was on the part where you went to go see your coach, and you had no place to stay. You was totally unprepared for what was going on, and your coach looked back at you and said, "What." <laughs> um, <clears throat> so basically, he called the uh, housing, the, the people in charge of housing, you know, fi- getting students in the dorms, basically. And so um, so he called that individual, and, and they basically put me up in, the, uh, in this little dorm, uh, basically all-white dorm, primarily all-white dorm. It was supposedly referred to as the jock dorm. Um, okay. But basically, it just seemed like you know, basically a place where all white people lived. And, and uh, West Asians, my brother, we we must be politically correct on geometry. West Asians, they're not actually white. <laughs> they just west on the a map of Asia. That's it. So, okay. Well, see, you have to remember, I'm going back to that frame of mind. I understand, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and so. Uh, and basically, what helped me to to kind of uh, begin to get myself together, even to the point where I am today, is uh, there was a dining hall dining hall called South. So that's where everybody ate generally, most of us anyway. Um. So no, I'm I'm, I'm sorry, I'm mixing them up. So there was a dining hall called Dascom. And that's where most most of us ate. So I go to Dascom to have breakfast, see these black people, so I immediately go toward them, you know, and listen to their talk and everything. And then I'm like, well, you know, where you stay at, bro? And he's like, the African heritage child. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> So, Y'all got room? Uh, so, so heck yeah. I mean, you know, the thing is, is that the African Heritage House always had a spare room as such, um, because even though it was really popular to us, one of the one of the things is that you could always find a white person or two in the African Heritage House because it was always uh, basically we didn't have enough black people who wanted to be there. Mm-hmm. But in any event, I, I wanted to Wait, be stop. There, so Wait, right. stop. I'm going to stop. I got to ask. Being the asshole that I am, I got to ask. You said there's always an extra room, right? Mm-hmm. That, is, is that what I heard you say? 
And then you immediately went and said that there's a West Asian or white people will always be in the African house because there wasn't enough room. So I would assume that the rooms were filled. So when you say there was an extra room, does that mean that when Kwame wanted to move into the African heritage house, they just basically opened up a room by throwing out somebody? Is that what you're saying, brother? Yeah. Oh, damn. The the availability for rooms in the African heritage house, you know, was generally speaking, it was there. Wow. Wow. Uh, you, you, I, you, the type of politician I want in my life, brother, because you didn't, you didn't, you got straight to the point. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but you know, um, uh, so anyway, that that's that that was my first two days' experience on Oberlin's campus. Coming totally unprepared, being housed up <clears throat> by, uh, but yeah, being housed up amongst people I didn't really want to be a, among like that anyway. And the second day is uh, when I found the African Heritage House. And I wish I could have said it got a lot easier then, but you know, you have those uh, freshman like experiences. Oh, that yeah. I had, and, uh, you realize uh, how to dig a debt. <laughs> well, I, so, I, yeah, I, that was my experience. Now I wasn't ready in um, academically, and I wasn't. I didn't understand the whole cop because, uh, like in many ways, like like you with your story, I wasn't planning to go to college, but I wasn't planning not to go to college. I was in. I was in that in that teenage days this is why i kind of get upset when people when they don't when they act like they never experienced this it's like i'm at a point in my life where everything is about to change i don't know what the fuck i'm gonna do so i'm gonna enjoy as much as much as i can right now you know what i'm saying and i didn't i didn't know and i got this i got the scholarship from ohio state and i went to the military not for the scholarship not because there was even any money connected to college, because all of the adult men in my life had went through the military experience, so I wanted to be part of that tradition. So I went there because I felt that's what I needed to do in order to become a man. So I went to the military not knowing that there was also, also some college money attracted to, uh, attached to that. So when I went to college, I was un- unprepared um, 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 academically, Financially, I had no idea what I had done because when I went to find out about the money, because everybody is stressing about money, I'm thinking, well, damn, I need to go up to the office to find out, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody crying about money around this motherfucker. What's going on? So I must owe some money. So damn, let me go up here to this office and find out how much money I owe. (laughs) Look, I stood in line. I made it all the way to the end. I'm missing classes now because I'm like, I'm I'm scared. I owe money. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know what a full ride meant. So I go through the I go through the line. I get up there and they be like, Well, what's your name? I give them my name, my social security number, blah, blah, blah. And they be like, uh, well, we owe you three thousand dollars. No, actually, it was more than that. Let me let me go back. It was more than that because I wasn't staying on campus. I I'm like, excuse me, we we owe you money. You know what I'm saying? Um, I said, well, you, they say, uh, I said, well, uh, I am having problems. Well, I I do want to stay on campus. So they after they deducted all of the money for me to stay in the dorms and give me the meal tickets and stuff. They still cut me a check. All right. I used to get the student refund check. Oh, my. I was like, hey, I was just like, shit, I didn't know. But then, you know, you know, but anyway, but then academically, I wasn't prepared either. But go um, go ahead. Give us give give us one of your college stories. Brother Rashid, call in. Give us one of your college stories, man, because all young people need to hear this. Go ahead. Well, my college experience. 
I didn't even realize until I was an adult that I had a full right academic scholarship to Wright State University. I thought everybody didn't pay for college um, until I just, like, the road is cool. <laughs> and they, <laughs> they said loans. And I'm like, wait, what? What is this? Loans? <laughs> I thought they were going to pay for it. I ain't never had to pay to go to school. What is this? <laughs> And so my my sister was like, welcome to the real world <laughs> where a lot of us was in debt from college and you're going to be, now you're in part of that club. I was like, oh. And I never realized that, you know what I'm saying? I had took a loan out for $500 in college, I remember. Um, and I, so people, I kept hearing about these loans. Right. Was, getting and I was like well why don't I have one but I was so now looking back I was so confused so I went and got a loan from the school for $500 and that was the equivalent of my student loan debt when I left college $500 and I just when I called Wright State to get my transcripts and get my credits transferred to the SNU school they were like give us our $500 my transcript and they no they was like it looks like you paid it. That thing is so old. We're just going to release your transcripts. And I, it looks like you paid it. I don't know. And well, it, it, you, you know, when we were in school, your account. When, so that when, was cool for me. When all of us was in school, they they just was coming out of the type typewriter phase. Y'all do realize that. <laughs> the what? Typewriter. Typewriter? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we came. I mean, all of us are at the age when we got to a Kwame. Kwame is is one year older than us, so Kwame might have had to do some paper. Did you have to do any papers on a typewriter, Kwame? <clears throat> no. Well, he went to that so rich college. School, they I was think. ahead of the line. But I only went to college for a year and a half. But I don't. So we were doing Lotus back then. That's all I remember. Uh, man, listen. Right there was Lotus. Um. Um. Lotus one two three. Time out. You that, went there. You went there. Oh, was you at yeah, opening in '84? Yeah. See, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I'm gonna shut up. Go ahead. <clears throat> you know you had some no, typing no. paper. You know you turned in some handwritten papers. To your old ass. You, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I had turned. Look, my first typewritten paper was at Oberlin. Look, I'm telling you, man. Was it on a typewriter? That's all I'm asking, man. I'm just asking. Was it on? No. I said it was at Oberlin, bruh. We were doing, we were working on computers. In 84. Yo, rich ass. That's a rich ass school, man. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. That's because a lot of times when... I came to understand through that experience at Oberlin, and I didn't understand it at the time because I was just out of contact. But when I started, you know, listening to people talk at Harvard, Yale, and this kind of stuff, it's the same argument that our people were struggling for when they said, look, we need the resources. Right. We don't need white teachers. Right. We need the resources. Right. We need the resources. Oberlin had the resources. They had the resources without a shadow of a doubt. I'm just read, messing with you. Read, read. Look, man, when you read those books that were set in the Midwest in the, you know, in the early, uh, well, in the mid uh, 20th century, read those books, or, 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 or hell, for that matter, the late 1800s 
to the uh, throughout the 20th century, Oberlin College is always a college that's mentioned because wow. of you know the Underground Railroad going through there because mm-hmm. that's where those those uh, oppressors who had children with black women um, that's where they would send them to be educated. Mm. Okay, so it had that's an interesting resources. history for me. Oh, in Oberlin they would do that. In Oberlin, I got family there. I used to live there as a child. And in Cincinnati too. Cincinnati, they I don't know what school they got and, down there. <clears throat> you know, furthermore, that piece to what uh, uh, Vita was talking about. Look, Mother Elizabeth Harriet, my Karu. She was an elder sister who worked in the uh, basically the release of transcripts and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And she understood the black students' plight. Many of us left there in debt. Many of us couldn't afford a damn transcript or to pay the debt in order to have our transcripts released. And so the sister would tell us, pay for one. So we paid for one. And because of ancestors like her, Right. We would get six and seven transcripts mm. because she understood our struggle. For sure. For sure. And so when we talk about, you know, um, I mentioned to you uh, uh, our, our, our saxophonist, uh, jazz saxophonist, uh, Hatem, uh, the brother who... Eddie uh, Bayard. Eddie Bayard. Thank you. Brother Eddie Bayard, you know, so when I talk about, you know... Uh, the Donald Birds and, um, you know, and, and, and the many names that you will run across in a lot of our, in a lot of our books. I mean, shit, Navita, I was telling you, you all, when in that book we're reading presently, uh, Black Face, White Mask, or Black, Black Face, White yeah. Mask, Black, yeah. and he started going through those names. And all I could do is shake my head because those are ancestors who came through that school Oh, wow. But anyway, so, you know, that's a, uh, so when you, when you find a lot of us, uh, Oberlin, uh, black Oberlin grads who've come through that and we wow. understand the, the psychological crises that you're put through there. And sure. you come to a yeah, you come to appreciate uh, more strongly those who have gone through there, and then the faculty who assisted took you into their. I mean, man. Okay, I'm it's trying not to get too emotional here, but just oh. <laughs> go ahead. Hey, 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 hey! hey, 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 hey. People hey, with yeah. that mindset in those places check, check. to do those things you know what i'm saying because um you know when we get in those positions that you know luckily you know you had a sister that was understanding and was also um what's the word i want to use like productive you know what i'm saying word uh, Mm -hmm. she she bears Mm -hmm. fruit for lack of a better word to her community through helping you where in other people, other people may have not done right. such they, things. They could throw and, it off um, and say it's, just, it's, 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 just, it's the way things are rather than taking some personal like responsibility and use of power. Has, is incarcerated, um, you know, so uh, I'm not going to mind saying that he comes home this month. But one thing he told me that was said to him while he was incarcerated by a black guard he said the guard said, you think I'm supposed to give you some kind of special treatment or privilege or think of you differently because you're black and I'm black? My son said, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sure do. And I think you should because they do would treat them differently than they treat us just off the strength of their white. They'll do certain things for them or not do certain things to them 
that they will do to us. And you should be thinking the same way about your own people, you know, but, you know. Well, well, you gotta, look at well, you gotta remember where they're trying to come from. <laughs> are they? Right. I mean, a lot of us we really have to evaluate who and what we are every day, and often we have to remind ourselves. Um, like I mean, cause like it could be as simple, it could be something as simple as us not even being comfortable enough to announce who we are, or like for example. Um, you could be going for something that's specifically for black people, but still in the language, you still hear everybody else mentioned, even though this shit is specifically right. for black people, you feel right. that you have to include everybody and we have to get up out that shit. We got to get out of it. We got to get out of it. You know what I'm saying? We go to these jobs and, uh, not, uh, and, and it, it, Took, it takes years for you to realize that you've been trained to make white people feel comfortable to not yes, to, because that inclusivity right in the package of everyone makes them feel comfortable and I don't know what it is that when you even with black people you like you said I guess it's a conditioning that makes them uncomfortable to specify black it makes them right. uncomfortable. I heard uh, a thing with Kamala Harris, uh, Kamami Harris, where she was saying, I, I'm not going to do anything specifically for, for black, black people. people. Get out of here. So now, if, you was, if she was to say, I'm not going to do anything specifically for the LGBTQ, they'd be on her ass. Or Hispanics. Or the Asians. So it's always okay. And it's palatable for the masses to say that when it comes to black people, even it's palatable for black. It's even know? more palatable. To, it's, it's racist. That's reverse racism. Right. We don't want to be like them. I mean, okay. and, and this is why we got to have conversations and talk so that we could go and and expose some of the tricks that have been used on us. You know what I'm saying? Because Maybe it's, that could be my first show. That I, that I'm, okay, I'm we already that. talked about what your first show is. You can't keep floating around, man. Well, I just St- had to remember what it was supposed to be. Oh, my you know, God. I should have wrote it down then. Oh, my God. All right, listen. <laughs> I got to get to my adventure, family. I'm up. I want to thank you all for calling in. Um, for sure, for what, sure. Kwame sound like he went to, a, to an excellent university, and the only thing I can say <sighs> to to up my it's a college it's a it's a college bro only it's... three thousand strong at it in its best of years okay well the only okay is a college and the only thing I can say to make myself and and my alma mater uh stand out is we we kick we will kick your ass at football and um and I don't know whether yeah, I should be Ohio, I don't know if I Ohio, should be Ohio, proud of that or or, or be the ashamed. Last Ohio school, the last Ohio school to beat Ohio State was Oberlin College. Ain't that some shit? Around 18, 1890 something. Oh, eight. <laughs> Y'all held on to that. That's that's part of the lore. You know what I'm saying? That's part of the lore. <laughs> he, he said he said you said Frederick Douglass was a tailback. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, let me let y'all go. Everybody have a good day. Uh, hopefully, I'll uh, hear you. Let me just promote this real quick. Uh, um, Ask Hack Study Group slash Book Club this evening, 6 p.m. on the Black Line. Or you can come meet us at Aluma Lodge Bookstore on Maryland Avenue. I don't know the street number. But the black line, of course, is 614-556-4535, 6 p.m. We're reading black skin, white mask. And typically, if you don't have a book, you can still participate because someone will read the book aloud. So That's dope. That's dope. That's it. I say. <laughs> Family. Right, so. and, and by the way, I do have a degree from Ohio State, too. So now. Uh-oh. That's, Uh-oh. A ma- that's a math. That's a master's degree. That don't count. Ain't the real shit don't happen on the master's level. Is the as far as the sports and stuff. So, but he do have a degree from Ohio State. That's where I met him, Matt. You know, 
And I want to thank everybody for tuning in. And, and, and also, hopefully, you got something out of it, family. Like I said, even if you're not ready for something, sometime you're going to just be bold enough to go out and do it. You know what I'm saying? Because I could have stayed in Akron. You know what I'm saying? Without a shadow of a doubt. Well, no. Nah, my grandmother threw me out. But, um. <laughs> well, grandma told me I had to leave. So, uh, only because I was, only because I was taking up for people. But anyway, family, I'm up. I'm out. And I'm on my way to my adventure. Y'all have a great and marvelous day. And I will see you tomorrow for our Toast and Talk. And we're going to have a real Toast and Talk. And I'm going to be letting people know, you know, because y'all get ready because them Ambrosia, them Ambrosia deliveries might be popping off tomorrow, right? And I'm moving to try to get some more greens. So y'all get ready as well for those that missed it. And shouts out to my mama, mama, mama Margarita. I see you out there. How you doing this morning? And with that, I... Am uh, I am uh, out. What is a lion without his pride? What is a whale without his pie? What is a monkey without his troop? What is a wolf without his pack? The answer is very simple. They are the same thing that a human being is without a try. Pray. <laughs>